In this video, we'll cover what it is to play the Reaper, the real ninja assassin class of Lost Dog, and why you'd want to play this one over any of the others. Reaper is a very fast paced DPS class, which as you'd expect, falls under the assassin group. It's by far the squishiest one of the lot, but it really fulfills that rogue class fantasy with its high mobility and backstabbing prowess. Reapers wield their daggers to unleash a fury of attacks and can then choose to go invisible in preparation for a powerful attack, or even use their skills in an empowered chaos mode. As a Reaper, you'll have the choice between a sustained DPS or heavy burst playstyle. They use their unparalleled mobility to stay positioned behind targets and use a variety of skills to either continuously deal huge damage or activate their identity and execute an empowered attack. Reapers are extremely effective in all sorts of content with their unpredictable nature and their reactionary gameplay. To excel as a Reaper, you'll have to be on top of your game and always ready to counter whatever your enemies throw at you. This class has very flashy and visually appealing animations that are fitting of this archetype. So if sneaky aesthetics are your jam, well, you're in for a treat. When it comes to your other advanced assassin classes, the Reaper is easily the squishiest of them all. This can be incredibly dangerous, so a good Reaper has to have great knowledge of the fight to ensure they can efficiently deal damage and survive. But if you can pull it off, it means the ceiling of this class is very high indeed. On the other hand though, Reapers are the most mobile of the Assassin advanced classes, which is crucial because much like the Deathblade, they are reliant on back attacking to deal their damage. The main thing that separates the Reaper from the other Assassins though is their ability to go invisible, which in turn empowers one of their next attacks. Though much like the Deathblade, they also have the option to benefit from the buffs their identity can offer. In comparison to the Shadowhunter, the Reaper is far more slippery and less in your face, so to speak. The Shadowhunter subclass focuses on defeating enemies by taking on demonic forms to unleash their power. Whereas the Reaper is your more classic assassin archetype. So the Reaper may already seem pretty captivating with its assassin traits, aesthetics and a very appealing class fantasy. But it gets even better when you start to take a look at their unique class identity. Reapers have two identity bars that they can fill, a green gauge and a red gauge. Both of these bars can be filled by landing green skills or purple skills. The green gauge is filled first and allows you to activate persona mode. Once activated the green gauge will slowly deplete and will be emptied once you use a skill. The red gauge can be filled by continuing to generate meter after the green bar is already full. Once the red bar is filled, you are automatically put into chaos mode. So when you activate persona mode, you go invisible and monsters can't detect you until cancelled or when your gauge is drained. This can be cancelled by any action, but not including clicking to move. You also summon a clone to take your original place that can be guided, or it will automatically attack the nearest enemy. Not only all of that badass trickery though, but you additionally gain buffs as well. You get a chunk of movement speed and a substantial damage increase on your next red skill, which can stack up to 5 times depending on your stealth duration. When you activate chaos mode, you get some more juicy buffs for a short duration or even longer if you can maintain them. This grants increased crit rate, attack speed and movement speed and you can maintain this mode and these buffs by casting any purple skill or landing any green skill. I guess you can kind of see why this is all so exciting, you've got stealth, you've got clones and all the usual tricks of the trade when it comes to playing a Trixie assassin. But to top it all off, you can also go absolutely nuts when you get that chaos mode up and running. When it comes to PvE, you will either deal huge burst damage or just maintain fantastic DPS, all depending on your choice of class engraving, which is going to come down to what playstyle you prefer or what's best for the type of content you'll be doing. Either way though, you do have to be extremely careful with your positioning because you are super squishy due to your low defense coefficient, which you should be familiar with if you've played classes like Machinist, Gunslinger or Deadeye. Another thing though, you're always going to be trying to hit the boss from behind, so you have to be aware of all those different fight mechanics alongside positioning to avoid getting deleted. You'll have to make use of your various mobility skills to position yourself safely, deal massive damage and stay alive at the same time. Reapers take a very reactive role in PvP. Generally, they like to pick off enemies by utilising their high mobility, invisibility and fast paced combos. They also thrive in 1v1 situations as they are incredibly unpredictable. Much like in PvE, they have tons of dashes but are still incredibly squishy. Getting hit by a hard hitting combo can easily be fatal for any Reaper. And if they do get outnumbered, they're really going to struggle to perform at their peak. Reapers mainly use their invisibility to outplay their enemies and catch them off guard, creating chaos in the arena. Let's move on and take a look at some of the Reaper's core abilities. And the first one is Rage Spear. You gather up red shadow energy and then thrust forward dealing some pretty amazing damage. This is your hardest hitting skill, so you want to take this into account for your rotation and gem priority. Next up we've got Nightmare. This throws a dagger at the target location and then you can use the skill again to teleport behind the hit target if there's no obstacle between you and your enemy. You're also going to gain movement speed for 2 seconds after teleporting. So this ability grants insane mobility and damage but it's also your counter and one of the most powerful counters in the game. It allows you to throw that dagger to the boss, then reactivate it to get in front of it and then counter. Dance of Fury is another one of the Reaper's core abilities. You gather red shadow energy to quickly move forward and inflict damage. 
You're then going to perform another slash as you return to your position, and this skill also causes destruction. Finally, we have Distortion, which is another excellent mobility tool for any Reaper. You hastily dash 10 meters forward, and it allows you to move through Guardians. As with all classes, the Reaper has access to two Awakening abilities, one of which is Lunar Eclipse Cadenza. This is the ultimate skill you want to use in PvE. You'll focus all Shadow and Lunar Energy to summon a giant Shadow area, which deals damage to nearby enemies. The Shadow clone jumps through those enemies, inflicting damage before creating another huge explosion. It also fills up one of your identity gauges. If you're going for PvP though, you want to use Solar Eclipse Requiem. What a badass name. You'll focus your mind and blend into the shadows for 4 seconds. Then you can use the skill again to sneak up to your enemy in the shadows and deliver 3 strikes launching your foe into the air with the final strike. You'll become stealthed again for 4 seconds upon each strike and you can still attack enemies whilst you aren't stealthed. Every Lust Ark class has access to engravings that are going to focus your playstyle in one particular direction. For Reaper, you can choose between Lunar Voice and Hunger. We're going to start with Lunar Voice. With this engraving when entering Persona mode, you immediately increase the damage of your next swoop skill, instead of increasing it over time, meaning you're going for a far more burst heavy playstyle. This means you'll play around charging your identity meter until you get into Persona mode and then using an empowered swoop ability. When playing with this engraving, focus on specialization as your primary stat and then crit as your secondary stat priority. With the hunger engraving though, it's all about chaos mode. So if you enjoy going ham and pressing buttons non-stop, this playstyle is probably the one for you. With this engraving, your Chaos Meter will regenerate 30% faster, and when it's full, your attack power increases. This playstyle is often described as the Piano playstyle, where you're constantly using all of your skills at all times. Much like the Lunar Voice engraving, a stat priority should be Specialization first and Crit second. Whichever playstyle or engraving is for you, either way the Reaper is a ton of fun, so make sure you give it a go and let us know how you get on. Don't forget to check out our website for more information about the Reaper or any of the other classes in the game, along with raid guides, boss breakdowns and plenty more from our Lost Ark experts.